Coming up, Hands on Mac. Let's lock it down. Hands on Mac best security practices next. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by LastPass. Allow your remote workforce the ability to do their best work securely without jumping through hoops. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. Happy Friday. We are ready. Now, I've completed my five step road to Big Sur, but in a way, you could consider this number six, except that it doesn't just apply to Big Sur, it applies to everybody using a Mac. Setting up your Macintosh to be more secure. A lot of these tips we've covered here and there in previous episodes, but I wanted to put them all together in one place so you could go through it and decide what you want to do to make yourself more secure. Step one uh, in making your Mac more secure is to decide how a risk you are. So the things that uh, I might do might be different than the things you might do. Who you want to think about, and this is true for security in general, who are you worried about? What are you trying to protect and from whom? Uh, if you are trying to protect yourself from a three-letter agency like the NSA, that's a lot more difficult. And in fact, maybe the Mac isn't the best choice for that than if you're just worried about, uh, you know, a hacker who's, you know, is casting around trying to put malware on machines or what we call the evil maid, which I think is mean to maids, but somebody in your physical environment that might be, whether it's at work or at home, might be getting access to your Macintosh. What is the threat model? What are you trying to protect? you got to think a little bit about that because... The level of security you employ should be appropriate to the level of risk. It's very easy to lock down your Mac so tight that it's almost impossible to use it. Then I don't want you to do that, especially if you don't need to. Uh, on the other hand, there are some things pretty much everybody should be doing to make sure that their Macintosh is as secure as possible. Step one, and this is true for every computing device in your life, whether it's uh, an IoT device like a router uh, or a phone or your desktop computer, your laptop, keep it up to date. Keep the operating system patched and keep third-party software patched because the biggest problem with security is unpatched software. It's estimated about 80% of all the threats you face out there uh, are attacks on unpatched software. We talk a lot about it on security now. You know, so, uh, bulletins, uh, you've heard the phrase zero days. Uh, warnings come out. There's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem. But in almost every case, we don't hear about the problem until after the affected company has fixed it, has patched it, almost always. Uh, and the only risk then comes to people who just aren't patching. They're not keeping their stuff up to date. So job one is to keep it up to date. The good news is Macintosh computers will almost always let you know if there's an update. Software you've downloaded from the App Store will automatically update. Uh, there'll be a notification. You might check from time to time in your system preferences. They've moved this, by the way, in Catalina and uh, in Big Sur. I'm sure it'll also be the case. I'm still on Catalina. Big Sur hasn't come out. But remember, you're going to be going to um, check updates here in system preferences. There's no longer an updates uh, menu item under the Apple. It's here in system preferences. It's, it's that gear that says software updates. And look, lo and behold, uh, I didn't get a notification about it, but there is an app update to my Catalina 10.15.7. Eventually, I would have been told about it, uh, in fact, look, your Mac will try to update later tonight and will automatically restart. So this Update Now button is only if I want to update right now instead of waiting till later tonight. Generally, when I come in, it will have been updated as long as you check this box. And I recommend strongly that you do that says automatically keep my Mac up to date. That's in System Preferences 
under the software update preference pane. Automatically keep my Mac up to date. You can see in advanced what you can check. You want to check for updates automatically? Yes. You want to download new updates when available? Yes. You want to install them? Yes. You want to install app updates from the App Store? Yes. You want to do all of this, system data file security updates, yes. Unless you have a good reason not to do it, perhaps you have older hardware or software that might not be compatible with the updates, this is the number one thing you can do to keep your Mac secure. Make sure you've got all of those boxes checked because you want your Mac to automatically update. That is so important. I can't underscore that more. If you, if you want to even know more, there are mailing lists. Apple has a security announced mailing lists at lists.apple.com. Uh, people who are in a, a business where they have many Macs to maintain, or maybe their, uh, their threat model is a little bit uh, more uh, precarious, will subscribe to this to keep up on security announcements from Apple. That's free, lists.apple.com. You want to look at the security announce uh, uh, list, because that, that will have stuff. I think, valuable and useful stuff to keep track of. Let me, though, start you uh, at Apple's own page. Uh, it's part of the Mac OS user guide, so you can actually launch this from the help uh, menu. I'm going to zoom out here so you can read it uh, on your Macintosh. And it's just, it's a, it's a pretty simple, but I think it's a pretty important user guide. You select the version that you're Reading, uh, soon Big Sur will be available. Again, it hasn't come out yet as we record this. In fact, I suspect even as you listen to this, it won't be out yet. Uh, I'm thinking maybe middle uh, to late November at the earliest. In any event, check the version of the operating system you use because Apple does change these things. And follow these requirements. Use secure passwords. You know all about that. Uh, require users to log in. You know, there's a setting in uh, the users and account preference that will allow you to log in automatically unless you are absolutely sure that your Mac is never going to be stolen and no one other than you is going to be able to physically access it it's probably a good idea not to have automated login and you don't want to have an automatic login on any laptop absolutely not so make sure users log in um, in fact that goes to the third point here which is to secure your Mac when it's idle if you're at work Maybe a few of you have been bit by the old, I'm sending this email from my coworker's account. That can be very embarrassing. You, you want to set your Mac to log out if your Mac is inactive. And you also want to set it to require a password after waking up. And again, that's all going to be available in the system preferences under the security preferences. So you're going to very much want to take a look at those. And, uh, and turn those features on under the general. A login password should be set for every user. You should require the password immediately after sleep. Okay. I actually uh, turn this on on most of my Macs. That's secure, which is to have, I have to turn that all on, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, I won't do it right now, but I usually, in fact, we're going to do a whole hands-on Mac on e ways to easily log into your Mac. But I like the fact that I can log in with my Apple Watch. The only thing to be aware of is that's proximity-based whenever you come within 30 feet of your Mac. So you may not want to turn that on if you're in a shared space or you're in an office. That can be a little bit risky. Apple's done a very good job, I think, of using um, uh, of, uh, security on the Macintosh and really locking it down. Every iteration of Mac OS has gotten safer and safer. We've talked in previous episodes about Gatekeeper and things like that. There's one other uh, tip that I, I think is actually a pretty good tip, which is to uh, turn on the screensaver uh, and use hot corners to start it. Uh, this kind of, you know, this depends on how you feel about um, uh, being able to get up and walk away. If you've got it set so that it times out after a minute or five minutes or ten minutes and there's other people in your space, that means they could, as you walk off to the bathroom or the lunchroom, quickly sit down at your Mac and do something. So maybe turn on this feature, the hot corners feature. You can have a a lock screen hot corner 
So I'm going to make my lower left corner, this one down here, the lock screen. And then whenever I move the mouse to the lower left-hand corner, watch, I'm going to lock my screen. Before you, there you go. Before you get up to go to the bathroom, do that, and now your Mac is locked. And if you've, if you've made sure that there's a strong password on it, and if you've turned on File Vault, that's a very good thing to do. Secure your Mac when it's idle. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about some more advanced tips. Uh, and this is one that I am kind of have mixed feelings about. Uh, and that's whether you should be using your Mac as an administrative user or not. Um, for a long time when we recommended setting up computers, whether Windows, Mac, or Linux, we would say never run as a administrator always run as a limited user and we can go back to the system preference panes and the users and groups system preference pane and we can see that i am in fact not doing that this is again going to depend on the thought you've already put in about what your threat model is and how secure you want it to be if you are an administrator you can install and remove software you can manage other users you can delete users you can change settings you can turn off the firewall you could turn off file vault you have absolute control of that macintosh it might make sense and remember any malware that you run will have the privilege that you have so it will run and as an administrator it might make sense we're going to click this box. Oh, actually, let me explain this a little bit. It might make sense to run as a limited user. Now, notice, even though I'm an administrator, I can't just wander in willy-nilly and change these settings. I still have to provide my password to do this. It's not an administrator password. It's the password to this account. But in order to change these settings, and I think this is one thing Apple's done, Microsoft's done this as well, even when you're running as a limited user, or I'm sorry, even when you're running as an administrative user, you can't just do whatever you want. You'll often be prompted for your password. So unless you're a threat model, unless you're really worried about being attacked, particularly by people who have access to your machine, I feel safe enough to run it as an administrative user. But you, you may find um, that that's, that's a risky thing to do. Notice I've given Rich DeMuro access to my computer, he, he uses this when he's filling in for me on the tech guy, but he's only a standard user. I don't want Rich to modify anything on my system without my knowledge. So, but on the same time, I want the convenience of being able to do that without having to log out and log in as, a, as an administrator. So this is one you're going to have to think about. Uh, if you are really, if you really want to keep it secure, Make a limited user, in fact, we do it right now, a standard user account. You'll see right at the beginning, we get to choose administrator, standard, sharing only is not much useful, and you could choose which group. But make a standard user account that is your day-to-day -day user account. And then you'll have to log in as administrator to do a lot of the things. This can be inconvenient. There are programs on the Macintosh that assume you're an administrator and won't run without it. You want to update your antivirus or update your software. Suddenly you've got to log in as an administrator. It can be inconvenient. But as is often the case, there's a trade-off between convenience and security. I feel secure enough. This system is in my locked office that I have an administrator account. But I do have a good password. So people have to know my password to, to, to get into it. And I lock it before I leave. I always lock my computer before I leave. There's one other thing you absolutely want to do, and I think we've talked about this before, uh, but turn on File Vault. This is full disk encryption. And this is easy to do on modern Macs. It won't even give you a penalty. What it will do is it'll encrypt the volume so that even if somebody stole your computer and could take out the hard drive and could bang on it, it would be very difficult them, for them to get the data. I think unless you have a strong reason not to do so, and I don't know what that would be, you should always turn on File Vault. Uh, on any computer, modern Macintosh with a T1 or T2 chip, there is zero speed penalty. It does it very well. Uh, you may say, well, what if I forget my password? And that's why you can set a recovery key when you turn it on. You could store that somewhere safely. Uh, without a recovery key, 
If you forget your password, you'll have to lose all your data and start over. So kind of keep that in mind. Your login password is the same password as your encryption password. So presumably you're not going to forget that. Um, and you notice you can also use your iCloud account to unlock your disk. Um, again, this is a question, and this is why we thought up, uh, uh, up front, well, how secure do I want to be? If you really want to be secure, you don't have a recovery key. You don't allow iCloud recovery. You make sure that the only way to get to that hard drive is by knowing that password. And then you make that password long and really strong. Just depends on your threat model. I, I make it pretty easy to type in pretty quickly. Uh, it's about 10 characters. It does have a mix of upper and lower case and uh, numbers. So I make it pretty good, but I want to make it easy to type. So... Uh, that's something you'll want to keep in mind. You can even make File Vault use a different password from your login password. Of course, that's much more inconvenient, but it's much more secure. So that's perhaps something to think about. One more security tip I think is important and everybody should use, and that's the firewall. I would turn on the firewall. Now, this is only inbound protection. And I've talked before about Lulu. If you go back and watch a previous episode, uh, Lulu, like Little Snitch, is an outbound firewall. This is only inbound, but at the very least, you should turn this on. And let me unlock it and show you. There are some things. Again, that's my password that's required to get into this. There are some options you may or may not want to set depending on your threat model. I block all inbound connections. Everything. That means my Mac is not discoverable on the network. Uh, it means file sharing and so forth are limited. If you don't worry about your network, I'm on a company network, so I'm maybe a little bit more worried, you can change this. For instance, automatically allow built-in software to receive incoming connections. That's Apple's version of UPnP. I think that's dangerous because that's potentially a way that a bad guy can open up a connection. Notice it does say built-in software, so it's not third-party apps. Nevertheless, it's conceivable that a malicious actor could impersonate a built-in program and open up a connection. Uh, you want to allow downloaded sign software to receive incoming connections? That's that third-party software. But again, notice the signed in here. It at least says, but we know who made that software. Uh, and I would always turn on stealth mode. Steve Gibson made this famous. This is really a tip of the hat to Steve Gibson. Don't acknowledge any attempts from the outside world to knock on your door, including ping. Uh, just ignore it. Drop it. Don't say nobody here or you're not allowed to use that. Just don't say anything at all. That's because hackers tend to scan looking for machines. If your machine responds in any way, even negatively, it's an announcement to the bad guy. There's a machine at this IP address, and they may try other ways to get in. So stealthing is even more secure because it just says, don't respond. Shh, ain't nobody here. I ter Personally, I turn on block all incoming connections and that is also stealthed so you're not gonna you're not gonna see any traffic and that's a good thing unless you know you need that so that's again the decision that you're gonna have to make under firewall options uh, and i would suggest running the outbound firewall lulu's free um, there's also a little snitch and there's other third-party outbound firewalls. That The reason you run an outbound firewall is in case somebody gets something bad on your system, you want to be notified that it's trying to phone home. So this only protects stuff coming into your system. You should probably get something to protect you on outbound stuff. There are a few other things you might want to do. For instance, if you're worried about privacy, uh, you're going to want to start thinking about which of the services on your Macintosh are going to phone home, reveal information about you to Apple, Spotlight, for instance, uh, your browser might be. Um, that's up to you. You're going to have to decide. Privacy is a little different than security. You're going to have to decide what you want the outside world to know about you. Um, and then if you really want to get crazy <laughs> about security, uh, there are some third-party guides I'm going to show you that are for very hardcore 
uses, maybe enterprise security or somebody who works as a spy for the CIA. Dr. Duh has put this on GitHub, the macOS security and privacy guide. He keeps it fairly up to date, but as you can see, the last update uh, was a couple of months ago. So it's not 100% up to date, but it has a lot of good tips you might want to read about securing. This is, this is a guide for people who really have tinfoil hats on. But again, uh, you know, if you do what I've just described, you're probably doing all you need to do. But if you are in a more uh, precarious situation, maybe you're a, a journalist uh, using a Macintosh in a risky country or you're a dissident, then there are some other things you want to check. For instance, recovery mode uh, leaks information to Apple about you and who you are. Um, there's ways to verify that you're installing correctly. I would do this. Remember, we talked about this uh, last week, create a bootable USB installer. Yes, Apple can install the uh, operating system from the network on a blank drive. It's just easier, faster, and it is somewhat more secure if you take a known good installation file and put it on a USB key. It's just nice to have that around, so I would strongly suggest doing that. There's an even more hardcore guide out there. Actually, there's several. But NIST, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, publishes a secure Mac guide that has super hardcore information in it. NSA also has guides for hardening systems. If you search hardening Mac OS, uh, actually, I would recommend searching hardening Mac OS for the version Catalina or Big Sur that you're using, you'll find a number of very hardcore guides with a lot more in-depth protection. Again, that's for somebody who's got a serious threat that they're worried about. What I've just described is probably sufficient for anybody. Uh, Intego, which makes a variety of uh, Mac software, also has a Mac security blog. This is probably a good place to uh, check for additional tips or changes. Much of what I've just described you'll see here, but if you want to read more about that, intego.com. Just remember, Intego sells security software, so at the end of many of these blog posts, you'll find a plug for installing their own software. Um, not sure that's necessary. I don't install in any virus on my Macintosh. I think Apple's done a good job of protecting the operating system. But if your Mac is being used by a teenager or being used in a risky environment, then maybe you want to think about uh, an antivirus. Intego makes a good one, as does our uh, sponsor, um, uh, ESET. Uh, here it is from Securacy, another security company, best practices. You'll find a lot of these, but also you'll see a lot of repetition. A lot of the things I've mentioned, in fact, all of the things I've mentioned are on their top 11 list. Um, there are probably additional ideas there you might want to consider. Uh, I would strongly suggest you use a password manager. This isn't specific to the Macintosh. And as you know, LastPass is a sponsor. To be editorially objective, I'll say you can use any password manager you want. Any password manager is better than no password manager. And as you probably know, if you only use Apple devices, iOS, macOS, uh, Apple has a pretty good password manager built in called the Keychain. It will generate long, strong passwords and record them for you, but it's up to you to manually paste those passwords in. Uh, at least use that if you don't want to use a commercial uh, password manager. In my opinion, the couple of bucks a month that LastPass costs is a cost, uh, well worth it for protecting you across the board. Password manager, very, very important. Definitely uh, use that. There's my tips. Just a few things everybody should do uh, to secure their Macintosh, even in kind of a non-risky environment. If you're in a more risky environment, there are other places you can go to get even harder core tips. They, they can get pretty wild. Apple has a very good security guide. You'll find that under the help menu of your Mac OS. Certainly read that. Uh, I think it's a very good uh, starting point. Um, do what I said right now, and I think you'll be pretty safe. The main thing is update. Lock it down. Make sure you have good passwords. Don't let anybody touch your Mac except you, and, and you'll be fine. Our show today brought to you by 
Yes, LastPass. What makes LastPass so unique and vital for your business? Well, IT and security leaders can take back control of password security. When you've got work from home employees, it might feel like that control is slipping away. You'll want the control from a central dashboard that LastPass gives you. You'll love it that you can customize admin privileges, ensuring that any given admin has only the right level of access. There are over 100 policies you can use to lock your systems down and advanced security features only LastPass offers. It's why we use LastPass at work, why I use LastPass at home, why I tell everybody to use LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. All right. Our Macs are secure. We're ready to use them. I'm sure Big Sur will be out in the next week or so. I'm hoping that uh, next week we'll have some brand new Macintosh hardware to look at running Apple's own silicon chips. That should be very exciting. We might have a lot to talk about next week on Hands on Mac. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you then. I'm Jason Howell, host of Tech News Weekly here on Twit.tv, along with my co-host, Micah Sargent. Each and every week, we talk to people who are making and breaking the tech news. It could be journalists writing amazing tech stories. It could be experts. It could be the sources of the stories themselves, developers, you name it. We bring them onto the show, and we talk to them about why their story is resonating with the world. You can watch and subscribe by going to Twit.tv slash TNW. Make sure you do that. You won't miss a single episode. We'll see you there.